Chainlink. So looking now at Chainlink, it's been able to get above the horizontal resistance of 1338 and is now into a new range between 1338 as new support or hopefully new support. We've had one test already and it's held relatively well as support and new resistance of 1774. Of course, price has not gone as high as that yet, but we do think it has the capabilities of moving slightly higher in the coming days. If we look at this from a market mechanics perspective, we can see the weighted funding rate has returned to being very positive again, having been very positive yesterday. So what this essentially means is there was a lot of longs uh, yesterday, hence they were paying such a massive premium of 0.05%, let's say, to the shorts for the, priv for the privilege or essentially to be long. Now, these longs would have been flushed out in this movement lower. So, of course, the candle yesterday was had a low of 1360 and a high of 15, call it 16. So it's a 20 percent spread between the low and the high. And obviously that move down flushes out a lot of those longs, which is what you would have seen in the resetting of the funding rate from 0 0.0499 to 0 0.0135. However, the funding rate is now turned pos like majorly positive again at 0 0.0313 suggesting that there are a lot of longs that have piled back in. If we look at the open interest, it's dipped down very slightly, but it still remains somewhat high. So this suggests to us that there is a little leverage in the system, the bias is to be long, and therefore, just the space in general, but link in particular, along with a number of others, do look vulnerable to a potential flush out at some point. If there is some negative news in the market, uh, we don't expect an ETF to be denied or anything along those lines. But if there is some negative news, we could see a drastic drawdown in price because essentially a movement down would trigger long liquidations, which then would shove price even lower. So we do feel that in the short term, price can continue higher and we have to respect the trend. The trend has been massively you know, pushing price higher all the time. We think a potential stopping point in the sort of near term so the next couple of weeks or next week or so maybe the 1770 to 1820 level in terms of a horizontal resistance and we think at that point you're seeing i mean you're seeing on the 12 hour the daily the three day are all very overbought so you're already at that level of being significantly overbought in the market the leverage market is starting to get um, very overheated or remains in a very overheated uh, level. So we do think there should be some form of flush out in the near term. Whether we get that move higher first, it, we think is possible. So we wouldn't look, be looking to short this. What we would look to do is again, take a step back because in trading this actively in a you know four hour by four hour window or even a day by day window, you're vulnerable to being flushed out in these big movements. So you know in that day, we basically closed and finished around a very similar price. We had a high of $16 and a low of 13 60. So a 20% spread that would easily have shaken you out of any long or short trade you would have had. So we try to take a step back from active trading, leverage trading, and we look to say, where do we want to be buyers of this? Would we be sellers of link? Probably not. The time we'd consider selling some link or de-risking some of our size would be into a move up into the sort of late 17s. However, we would be light DCA buyers on a retest of the low 13s. And if we if price in the coming weeks does move into the old range of 967 to 1338, we would be quite strong buyers below 1330 into this topping area of 1170. And anything below 1170, of course, we hope the 967 area holds as support. But anything sub 1170, we'd be strong, aggressive DCA buyers into that level.